Hello, this is Jack Bannerpaul, team lead for the SCAP Compliance Checker. And in this video, I'm going to do an introduction of the remote scanning capabilities of SCC on Windows. This is the sixth in a series of videos to help our users get up to speed with SCC. And this video assumes you're familiar with the basic usage of SCC, installation and running basic uh, scans locally. Um, I'm going to launch the application from the start, from the desktop. And when opening it, you should see the user account control. And we're going to kind of reiterate this through several videos. Make sure with SCC 5.4 and later, you see that the verified publisher is cs.niwictacatlantic.001. If you don't see this, make sure you have the DoD root certificates installed. Um, and if you have the DoD root certificates installed and still don't see that verified publisher, then you're going to want to get a, a, a new version of SCC from a trusted location. So FCC is, uh, only has remote scanning for Windows from Windows, so we won't be demoing this from Linux or from Mac. Um, this is all going to be on Windows 10, um, scanning remote systems in the same Active Directory domain. So to choose our scan types, we'll go over here to scan type, and we can start with Windows Single Remote Scan. And for this, for the most part, um, Classic might be your best bet. Uh, we're going to do a, just a, with classic mode, we're going to do a single content stream. We'll enable more with WMI. Um, with with uh, classic, it's going to take a while. We'll give a quick overview of what the difference is between classic and WMI. Classic is um, the way we originally did it in SCC, hence the name classic. Uh, but it really means that we're querying the system remotely via APIs, and all the processing is happening on the computer that you're logged into right now, or that I'm logged into. Um, WMI is more for automating at a larger scale. So it copies a temporary runtime or command line version of SCC across the network to the systems, spawns it, and then monitors it and pulls it back. Um, so that takes a longer to, to initialize, but it uh, pays off if you're doing a lot of content or a lot of systems, because it can do it in parallel. So we're gonna do a quick classic single host scan here. And this is gonna look just about like doing a local scan. Um, the only thing different is going to be where it's connecting to the remote registry and it's verifying connections and stuff. Um, and uh, for single single systems and small content streams like this Internet Explorer 11, Classic is a perfect way to go if you have access to the remote registry and the admin shares. Those are the two, and probably WMI, depending on what the content asks the SCC to do. So there is a single host scan done in Classic mode. You can do multiple host scan. You can also do... For this one, we're going to switch over to the WMI mode. If I did the classic mode with a host file, I would do the same thing we just saw, just do one host followed by the other, followed by the other. Um, so they're all in series, which means that if you're having a lot of content or a lot of hosts or a lot of, a lot of content with a lot of hosts, it can take hours. Um, for WMI mode, uh, we can select from a host file, or we can select an OU, or we can select an entire domain. Um, the entire domain is going to be Whatever is in uh, online at the time you click scan. Same thing with the OU selection. And for select OU, I can show the new interface here so you can go through and select one or many OUs. You can do shift clicks to do multiples like that. Um, but I kind of like to see, and this shows, um, it kind of generates the Windows um, query strings here that are going to be used. I personally like to use the host file method, which is kind of a hybrid of that. So I can create a host file from either the domain or for one or more OUs. So I can go through here and browse down to our DISA test computers. And then I can actually ping them, make sure they're online, make sure they're, everything's kind of ready to be scanned. And I can also see what hosts I'm going to scan before I decide to uh, pull the trigger and, and let, it, let it scan. The benefits of the OU scanning and the entire domain scanning are really if you want to uh, always have what's online at the time or have it scripted without having to, uh, to have any interactions with it. So I can see what's on the host file now. It's been created. So these are the systems in our test network. I can delete systems. I can click save. So right now we have 10 hosts, it tells me up here, and I have it in WMI mode. And I'm actually going to go back and to uh, kind of demonstrate more of the capabilities of why we do WMI mode. I'm going, to, I'm going to skip one of these pieces of content just because it's going to take 
too long for demonstration purposes. This one's going to scan the entire hard drive of all the systems and it's going to add a couple minutes. Um, but for WMI mode, having all of these content streams enabled versus one content stream enabled really doesn't add a lot of time. The WMI mode, the slow part is kind of the initialization and the copying and the spawning. Okay, now we're going to click Start Scan. And what this is doing, a new window will, will appear, and it's going to show the list of hosts that are being scanned. And it's already queried the operating system and the architecture, so it knows uh, which binary version to send out to these systems. And then uh, it's going to copy those files across and start SCC remotely on each one of them, and then monitor until the application completes and then pull the results back. So the uh, upfront processing is kind of the slow and uh, boring from a tutorial perspective. We can see um, not a lot going on yet. We'll start to see some action as soon as the application gets extracted on those systems and then actually processing and running. Um, we'll start to see something happen in here. Okay, so we're already uh, seeing some results saved on a couple of our 2012 R2 test systems that are being scanned. And now we can start seeing action on some of the other ones. So each one of these is running via a separate thread. On, um, so the thread on the local system is monitoring that remote process. Um, so each one of these things got pushed out and pushed out in parallel. So um, the fact that I'm running you know, all of the content on all of these systems doesn't take a lot longer than it would to take to do a classic scan of one of those hosts with the same content. Um, and kind of a thing to note as well, the um, content applicability checking within SCC, you can enable all of the content. Um, so like the Windows 2012 content or Windows 10 content, Windows 2019, and just blast it out. And SCC will check to see if the content is applicable before actually performing it. So you don't have to set up separate scans per operating system or anything like that. You can just kind of enable it all and fire and forget. Um, and we're already starting to see some results coming back. This is not the most exciting thing. Uh, So it's starting to pull results back, and then it's cleaning up on those remote systems, deleting the, the results that were created during the scan, deleting the temporary installation. And then as soon as all of these systems are complete, um, we'll be able to view the results. I could actually go through and cancel some of these scans if something was taking too long or if I decided I didn't want to do it. You could cancel it, and for the most part, SCC will, will try to clean um, safely clean up, um, but you don't want to. If you click the close button, it'll actually prompt you and say, are you sure you want to do this? Because if you close it, it'll actually kind of orphan those scans on the target systems. And then the, the binary files will be left behind. Any results that are created in scans will be left behind. Um, and that's obviously not ideal. And then the next time you scan it, um, SCC will have to kind of wait to make sure that the scan isn't happening on the remote systems. because it, So it'll cause some, some a little bit of confusion. It'll eventually work itself out, but it's not a desired method. So there is a scan complete, and that was with all those content streams of, of those systems. And I can click OK, and then close. And SCC will do a quick analysis of kind of the high-level summary data, and I can click View Results. And we can see all of the hosts on the left-hand side here and all the content streams that were run. Um, so for a Windows 10 system, like I said, it's going to run the firewall, the Defender, and the Windows 10, and the IE. For example, Windows 2019, it ran also the Internet Explorer and Server 2019. We have results for all these. I can go open up one of these, just see what something looks like. So there's a report from SCC. Um, if I did that same scan in classic mode, it probably would have taken a couple hours for sure. And it seemed like a long time to as I was doing a demonstration video, but um, there's definitely some power in the WMI scanning of the uh, multiple threads in parallel and the processing happening on the local systems. OK, so now we'll demonstrate just the basic configuration that could have been done for the remote scanning. We left all the defaults, and that's really, for the most part, what you're going to want to do. If you're scanning a lot of systems and you have plenty of memory on your scanning host, so the one you're logged into, 
you can increase the number of threads. It will speed up the uh, initial spawning of the application and a little bit of uh, refresh rates. Each thread, so these is maximum local threads for performing remote WMI or SSH scans. Um, the default's 30. Each one of those threads is going to take about 10 megabytes. So if we have an SEC takes a couple hundred, two, two or three hundred megabytes to, to launch. So if we have 30 threads, we're going to use about you know, 300 megabram. If we want to bump it up to 60, you know, if you only have 50 remote hosts, then it's not going, these threads are not going to matter that much. If you have like a couple hundred hosts that you're scanning at once and you want to bump up the threads to 90 or 100 and you have several gigs of free memory available, by all means, give it a try. Um, leaving out the default, we'll get there as well. It just speeds up a little bit. Um, everything else I would leave as default. It's pretty much the only configuration option for remote scanning. We can leave that. I'm going to put mine back to the default for the most part because our network isn't big enough to really benefit from, from increasing that. I'm going to click Save. Okay. I will demonstrate the command line scanning capabilities of Windows on, with SCC. I'm going to show first just how to uh, get the data from the TAC TAC help command. There are three remote scanning features in the command line version of SCC. Uh, the first two, <clears throat> TAC F and TAC H, are the classic mode ones. TAC F, you can point it at a host file and it'll scan all of the systems in there. TAC H is just a single, single remote. Uh, once again, those are both by a classic. And then the WMI is the new for, for SCC 5.4, where you can pass in a file, or you can scan the entire domain, or you can specify an OU. Uh, we'll come back and talk more about the details of the, the WMI. We'll first demonstrate attack F and attack H, which have been part of SCC uh, basically since the beginning. And these are, uh, I'm going to do attack F first. I have just a sample host file sitting here that has two hosts in it. So this is just a single piece of content stream again, the Internet Explorer 11, because I know it's quick. And I'm scanning two hosts, and all the processing is happening locally on the computer I'm logged into. And it's done with the first one, and it's moved on to the second one. Um, for, for simple content and small number of hosts, the classic mode works pretty well. Uh, and I can do a, just a single Attack H, and I can do Win 10 C. So I just type in the, the NetBIOS name, or I could do the uh, DNS name or the IP address. And this will do the exact same thing we just saw, just for a single host. Pretty simple, pretty quick. If you enable all the content and scan your entire domain, expect this to take a long time, which is why we've added the WMI scripting capability. I'm going to go back to the help interface though, because the WMI stuff uh, can get a bit more complicated to script. Um, I personally like generating a host file with the GUI and then scripting later. But if you want to do everything by command line, we have it here. So you can um, do a tac tac file and point it at any file you've already created. You can do a tac tac domain and it'll scan everything in your current Active Directory domain. Or you can do a tac tac OU and the OU, um, and this is, if you're familiar with, with Active Directory querying of stuff, this is going to make sense. If, it does, if you're not, then this is going to seem really strange. Um, this is not really our design. We're just passing it over to the, to the API. So for the most part, you're going to have like a tree structure of organizational units. So you're going to have to pass in all of them kind of in a, in a backward logic order, in my opinion, the, where the child starts first, and then the parent, and then the grandparent, and then the great-grandparent in that order, and quoted with the exact format here. Uh, so I will show one of those, and I have one pre-tested pre in my command line, because otherwise I would probably do a typo on this. So this one happens to be um, our test, I'm going to start from right to left, because this is this would be the base. So our test computer is OU, we have one an OU, OU within that called DISA, and then within that we have an OU called Compliant, and within that I have an OU called Windows 10. So we do it in this exact format, with quotes, with the OU equals and with the comma delimited in between all of these. Um, so this should scan um, a couple hosts. We're gonna have one system, I think, that is offline. So we'll see what happens uh, when the system is offline when you try to do a WMI scan. I'm gonna press enter.
and this is going to be uh, not the most exciting thing to watch. It is not going to give us as much information as the GUI does because just printing that and redrawing that to the screen um, is troubling, trouble, troublesome to say the least. This is just going to give like a high level statistics and we can see my uh, Windows 10 x86 compliance system is offline, um, but two systems are remaining. So we're calling that an error. It's really just the system was offline. Um, and so what it's doing right now on the other two systems, just like with the GUI, it's copying files, doing a temporary remote installation, spawning the application, and then watching it. And when the application is done, um, pulling the results back and then deleting the temporary installation directory. And if I were to close the command prompt right now, whatever files are on that remote system will be orphaned um, because we'll have no way to uh, collect them. And what would happen is the next time someone did a scan, they'd get deleted then. But you're also leaving, leaving files on the remote system that is unexpected. So it is not advised to uh, close the terminal or to end uh, control C of the application. Patience is a virtue here. And uh, watching this via tutorial, you realize that even things that don't take very long seem much longer. Now we're getting there. We'll get uh, two systems scanned. Uh, there we go. It's done. Um, so that is essentially a WMI scan of uh, several remote hosts when selected via organizational unit. Um, and I think that wraps up the command line scanning portions of this. And uh, we could go back into the GUI. We'll do that. We'll go back into the SCC application, and we'll see that the sessions via the command line also are displayed in the GUI. So they shares the same same results. So the scan that I just did is this top one right here. So that is a summary of, of the Windows remote scanning capabilities of SCC. Uh, we've demonstrated the graphical user interface. We've done a single host. We've done multiple remote hosts. We've done the classic mode, the WMI mode. Uh, we've demoed the new organizational unit um, scanning. And uh, we hope this is helpful. Uh, we'll be doing videos of remote Unix scanning and uh, combinations of Windows and Unix in a subsequent video. Thank you very much.